Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well. And today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm editing a photo and I'm doing things that honestly I never, never do. In fact, I advise you not to do most of the time, but sometimes, sometimes these things work. And uh, that's just another way of demonstrating that, you know, I sit here and I make videos and I tell you all the things that are useful to do. And it's also okay to experiment and play around and just move sliders and do stuff that you might not normally do because sometimes you find something that actually works on some images. That's really what I did. I kind of disregarded my own advice, got to where I got. Let's get into it. This is the photo, and I'm going to make this into a dramatic monochrome photo. It's already kind of dark and moody, and we're just going to amp that up because why not? I mean, it's photography. I'm editing a photo. I should do whatever I want to do to my photo, uh, as should you, my friends, as should you. So I'm going to play around a little bit with Develop Raw. I do recommend uh, always starting with Develop Raw because it's the best tool in Luminar. And even if it's not a raw file, start and develop. You still just have so much control and, you know, decent start. Uh, the first piece of advice I'm ignoring is I normally recommend just converting it to black and white straight away. And that's because I think you it's useful, if you will to start thinking in monochrome and seeing in monochrome early in the process to kind of get your head around it. But I didn't do that. I actually went into Accent AI uh, and I did two things here that I would normally never do. The first one is uh, I went to 70 uh, and I went to 70 on both of these. And honestly, it looks kind of cool even in color, I think. I mean, it's kind of blue. You can see the spots. I'm going to take those out. Um, but the two things that I would not normally do, number one, is I would not use this tool second. I would use Super Contrast second, and that's my preferred way of doing things. But hey, you don't learn and have fun and come up with new stuff if you don't experiment. So experiment. Don't always listen to what I have to say. You should experiment and explore and do things your own way. Uh, but that's the first thing. And the second thing is I always say don't use Accent AI very much. Um, I went to 70 on both of these, which is a lot, and it still kind of works. And the other thing that I also say is use Accent AI with a mask. I didn't mask it. I just hit the whole thing with that tool because it kind of looked good. Uh, so that's what I did. Now, I'm going to pause for a second. It's not going to be a pause to you. I'm going to cut this out of the video, but I'm going to pause, get rid of those spots, get rid of those people, and then jump back into the rest of this fun edit. Okay, I think that just about gets it. If I miss something else, uh, sorry, I guess. Um, it's just uh, I don't see anything else that's jumping out at me, and I'm ready to move on. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is jump into Super Contrast, which I normally do second, and I, I recommend most of the time that you use it uh, second after Develop Raw, but in this case I didn't. I used it after Accent AI, as you just saw, uh, and it kind of worked out for me. And what I'm doing here is playing with a light, which is why I like to use it so frequently and so frequently right after Develop Raw, because the early stages of an edit for me are getting the light right and kind of making the adjustments that I want to make to kind of set the stage for further uh, edits. This uh, this use of uh, um, Super Contrast before and after, it's definitely making for a bit more dramatic photo, which is kind of what I ended up doing. And this is where I got to it and I was like, I better make this a black and white. I'm getting a bit over the top. And speaking of which, I also went a lot higher here than I normally do. Usually you see me in 25 to 30 range on each of these sliders, but I'm in the, in the 40s uh, on, on the first two at least. Uh, but this is where I went to black and white and just said, all right, let's make this a black and white. Now that I've done all this dramatic stuff, and it looks pretty good, really, like that. Now I'm going to do some more things, but it still looks pretty good as a black and white. I actually liked it as a color photo, but it was too blue and too much green yellow. Uh, but I like it as a black and white. We're going to get even more deep. Now, before I go any further, if you don't have, I've got, um, if you don't have it yet, I've got a couple of free things for you on my website. For anyone that subs to my newsletter, there's a 27-page ebook about editing in Luminar Neo. And there's also a, a number of presets, including something called Winter Moods, which is just a preset pack, which is uh, all monochromes. It'll help you get some of these looks in one click. So if you want to check those out, there's a link down below. And I send that email uh, newsletter out about two, three times a month, full of tips, tricks, ideas, things like that. So if uh, you're interested, check it out down below. Uh, okay, so this one now, I'm going back into the uh, develop tool, and what I want to do here is actually lift this exposure. So this was the point where I said, hey, it's going to be a monochrome instead of just a, uh, you know, boring old color photo. So I went in, and I uh, now that I've made it monochrome, I started doing the things that I kind of need to do to control the light a little bit better, because it was getting a little bit wild. 
But, um, you know, I'm just having fun here, basically moving these sliders around until I get where I want it to be, which was, again, fairly dramatic. I want a high contrast image uh, in monochrome, and I'm achieving that with uh, all these different tools kind of stacking on top of each other. So if you look at this instance of develop before and after, before and after, it's really getting there. It's becoming fairly dramatic. Uh, and speaking of dramatic, there's a, there's a great tool, not dramatic. We're getting to that one. Hold on. I know what you're thinking. Uh, I'm going to get structure, and I'm just going to go to about 20, 25. Uh, let's, let's call it a 22. That's hitting the whole photo, and that's the other thing that I'm doing in this video. I yap and yap endlessly about masking and how important it is, how great it is, and it is important, and it is great, and I really, truly believe you should learn how to do masking and use it on just about every photo. I didn't use any masking on this photo. This is the other thing I'm doing. I'm skipping masking entirely. I'm just hitting uh, every tool across the entire photo, 100% uh, no mask. So it doesn't always work. It kind of works in this photo, I think. So speaking of that word dramatic, uh, that's what I want to do. I'm going to go to about a 25 here or so, pull this down to about a 50. And if you look at that, that dramatic has a nice little crazy pop to it. So before and after, I like that a lot. Um, and one of the things I like to do after doing that is come back and say, all right, Jim, you probably did a little too much. Maybe you should soften that a little bit. And a really great tool for softening up that structure and then dramatic, because it's kind of like hitting it twice with like a, like a really big punch of uh, kind of the, the appearance of detail, is coming into Mystical, because Mystical does a wonderful job of kind of softening up a photo adds a little bit more contrast, it adds just, I don't know, it's a nice little mood enhancer, if you will, and this is a moody photo for sure. So before and after, a little bit less in your face, it feels like. And then for me, in uh, the end of my edits on monochrome, I like to make them a little bit blue. Uh, and this is a steel kind of blue, is, is I don't know what I call it, something like steel blue, but I usually go to like between 30 and 40 on the saturation, and the number I like here is 230 which puts, puts you really like right into the edge of the blue. And I'm going to do the same in shadows, but not as much saturation. So like maybe a 30 on saturation, and then again at about a 230 here. So I'm going to pull that over there. And if you take a look at it, it just makes this nice silvery kind of look. I, I like it a lot. I call it a moonlight look. But if you look at the before, pure monochrome, black and white, if you will, and now a little bit of blue, and maybe it's a little too much. I might pull the saturation down a little bit in both of these categories just to not overdo it but it's a nice I, I, I call it moonlight I don't know what else to call it but it's kind of silver so again before true black and white and now a little bit of silver and that's it that is a dramatic monochrome black and white whatever you want to call it with a few filters applied liberally and in a somewhat random order not the way I would normally do it no masks I completely ignored my own advice and I think it works. Uh, if you look at the before, there it is. You know, it's a nice place. This was in Iceland on one of the Luminar uh, photo adventures, uh, which were so great and so much fun. But uh, a beautiful sight and now turned into a really dramatic black and white. Now, there's a million other things I could do to this photo. Like I might would get develop and do a linear gradient down here and kind of mask the water faded into that and darken it to give it a little bit of darker kind of framing. I might would do the same with the sky. And, and, and maybe I should do that, you know, should. Uh, but you can really create these dramatic monochromes with just a few tools in Luminar without even doing any masking. It does depend on the photo. But you can get a lot of great results, I think, without having to, to put too much work in, to be honest. I just kind of moved a few sliders and a bit too far in most cases, but it kind of works out in this case. And that's one of the things that I like about creating monochromes is especially kind of a dramatic monochrome, and that is you can push these pixels pretty far and get away with it because people look at it and they'll be like, wow, that's contrasted, that's dramatic, wow, when it's a monochrome. If this same photo was in color, people would be barfing all over it because it would look like a mess. And so if you ever want to make a dramatic monochrome, just know you can and you can get away with it uh, more so and more easily than you can with a dramatic color photo. So... That's, uh, that's it for this one. Just slipping in a little video here. Hope you had fun with it. Check out my ebook and my free Luminar presets that I uh, mentioned down below. And if you have any questions, I'll leave them in the comments. I'll be back soon with more videos, my friends. Hope you're having a super awesome day. And take care of yourselves. I'll uh, see you next time. And until then, adios.